In a peaceful suburban neighborhood, on the eve of Halloween, a group of youngsters eagerly prepared for their annual trick-or-treat adventure. However, this year, whispers circulated about a cantankerous old man residing at the far end of a desolate and dimly lit street. Legend had it that he was once an infamous witch who terrorized children for years. Unfazed by the chilling rumors, a handful of brave children decided to put their courage to the test and venture towards the old man's house, hoping to uncover a special treat or perhaps hear a fascinating tale. Disguised as ghosts and witches, with Halloween trinkets in hand, they embarked on a journey through the sprawling, eerie woods towards the mysterious abode. As they approached, the darkness grew denser, enveloping the house adorned with moss-covered walls and windows that resembled sorrowful, vacant eyes. The children inched closer, fascinated by the enigmatic aura that emanated from this peculiar place. Upon reaching the entrance, they timidly knocked on the decaying doors. At first, there was no response, leaving them in suspense. But then, the doors creaked open slightly, inviting them inside. The house stood shrouded in silence and darkness, devoid of any signs of life. Fear began to grip the hearts of the courageous children when suddenly, a solitary light illuminated the room. Emerging from the shadows, an elderly man materialized in a corner. Sinister, shadowy figures encircled him, urging him towards the children. As the old man approached, his face obscured by a hood, he held a wide bowl brimming with a crimson elixir. Slowly, he moved around the room, offering each child a sip of the mysterious potion. Under the influence of the drink, the children felt a wave of drowsiness wash over them, their bodies growing weak and intoxicated. With each sip, their strength waned, while the somber shadows in the room seemed to grow more benevolent, enticing the children into a timeless darkness. Once all the children had consumed the bewitching liquid, the old man raised his head, a malevolent smile curving his lips, and declared, Now, you are my eternal companions. He swung open the doors, allowing the shadows to envelop the children, vanishing into the night alongside the elder. From that fateful night onwards, the children never returned to their homes. Terrifying tales of mysterious disappearances on Halloween circulated among the townspeople, serving as a haunting warning to children. Cautioning them against surrendering to the clutches of darkness and seeking perilous adventures on the spookiest night of the year. Growing up, Halloween was always the highlight of my year. When the leaves transformed into vibrant colors and October rolled around, my neighborhood became a magical world of eerie costumes, spooky decorations, and, of course, an abundance of free candy. However, there was one particular Halloween when I was nine years old, a night that started as harmless fun but quickly turned into a horrifying nightmare that continues to haunt me to this day. My childhood was spent in the suburbs of Boston, where I lived with my mom, dad, and younger sister. My dad owned a small auto repair shop that repair cars all across the city, working tirelessly to provide for our family. Despite his busy schedule, he always made time for cherished annual traditions like pumpkin carving and indulging in Halloween treats. Earlier that year, my dad had to let go of one of his workers. I don't recall the man's name, but I distinctly remember my father mentioning that he was an introverted individual, known for his unsettling habit of staring at people for prolonged periods with an empty gaze. My father didn't provide any further details, but it was clear that this man didn't fit in with the team. When my dad informed him of his dismissal, the man remained silent, fixating his cold, piercing stare upon my father before turning away and disappearing into the distance. When Halloween finally arrived, our family eagerly engaged in the customary activities of carving jack-o'-lanterns, devouring an assortment of candies, and dressing up in elaborate costumes. That year, I had chosen a Batman costume, while my little sister delighted in her witch attire complete with a long pointed hat. As darkness fell, the streets came alive with excitement, and children like us embarked on a quest for sugary treasures. Clutching our pumpkin buckets tightly, my sister and I skipped from house to house, exchanging laughter and frights under the warm glow of porch lights. With each doorbell ring, our neighbors would feign terror and shower us with handfuls of candy. We joyfully visited countless houses, 
filling our buckets to the brim with delectable chocolates, lollipops, gums, and an assortment of treats. It truly was a perfect Halloween. After a few hours of trick-or-treating, exhaustion began to replace our initial excitement. Our buckets overflowed with candy, and our laughter became interspersed with yawns. Recognizing our weariness, our parents decided it was time to return home. We changed into our cozy pajamas, and our parents lovingly tucked us into bed. Our imagination still buzzed with the thrill of the festivities as we drifted off to sleep. Around midnight, a loud doorbell ringing jolted my father awake. Peering out of his bedroom window, which overlooked the front of our house, he could see no one. However, the persistent ringing continued, prompting my father to instruct my mother to stay upstairs with us while he ventured downstairs to investigate. My sister and I, startled from our slumber, hurriedly rushed into our parents' room, seeking comfort and security under the covers. We could hear our father cautiously descending the stairs, with my mother warning him to proceed with caution. When my father reached the front door and peered through the peephole, he was confronted with a chilling sight. A towering figure, dressed in grimy work overalls and donning a peculiar black mask, stood motionless on our threshold, incessantly pressing a button with his finger. My father demanded to know the purpose of this late-night visit, but the ringing abruptly ceased. The mysterious intruder slowly retreated from the door and approached one of our windows. To our absolute horror, we could hear the shattering of glass as the man forcefully smashed a window with a hammer, attempting to gain access to our home. In an act of bravery, my father swiftly grabbed the golf club he kept beside the door and began swinging it fiercely, warding off the intruder's advances. He shouted at the man, commanding him to leave our house. Eventually, the intruder callously retreated from our porch, vanishing into the darkness. My mother urgently informed us that the police were on their way and ushered us into her bedroom, locking the door behind us. My father, determined to protect us, tried to track the intruder's shadow as he made his way towards the back of the house. With each passing moment, our fear intensified, and we fervently prayed for the police to arrive swiftly. The sound of pounding grew louder and louder, but just as suddenly as it had begun, it ceased. The intruder disappeared into the night, leaving no trace behind. When the police arrived, they searched the area but found no sign of the man. They assured us that this individual would no longer pose a threat and that they would notify neighboring districts about his actions. However, the trauma inflicted upon us that night left deep scars. For weeks following the incident, my sister and I struggled to find solace in sleep, plagued by haunting nightmares. The feeling of safety and comfort within our own home was irrevocably shattered, forever altering our perception of Halloween, which would never again be the joyous holiday it once was. On a fateful Halloween night, I made the daring decision to embark on an unforgettable adventure by renting one of the most renowned and spine-chilling horror houses, available on the Airbnb app. As an avid fan of horror movies and a lover of the eerie ambiance that Halloween brings, I yearned to experience the true essence of terror. Upon arrival, the house cast an ominous shadow, exuding a gloomy opulence that hinted at abandonment and antiquity. Yet, a surge of adrenaline and excitement coursed through me, reaffirming my purpose for being there. Miranda, the enigmatic owner, welcomed me with a smile that seemed to conceal a deeper mystery. Her gaze held an otherworldly quality, perfectly suited for this macabre Halloween night. Stepping over the threshold, I found myself enveloped in an atmosphere of palpable fear, mingled with the scent of aged wood and lingering secrets. The interior was adorned with an array of unsettling artifacts and decorations, creating an immersive backdrop of spine-chilling horror. Masks and portraits of grotesque creatures adorned the walls, while disorienting acoustic music filled the air, intensifying the unease. As I ventured deeper into the house, I encountered locked rooms, their closed doors instilling a sense of foreboding. Each room seemed to harbor a dystopian nightmare, evoking trepidation at the mere thought of what lay behind them. Driven by an insatiable curiosity, I resolved to explore every nook and cranny of the house. However, as I opened one particular door, my blood turned to ice. Within that room, a macabre tableau unfolded, 
with terrifying props and ghastly decorations strewn about. Yet, what truly chilled me to the core were the pictures adorning the walls. They depicted previous guests, captured in moments of genuine terror and fear that surpassed mere performance. The raw, unfiltered emotions captured in those images were a chilling reflection of their true horror and panic. A surge of panic coursed through my veins as I desperately attempted to flee the room, only to find the door slamming shut behind me. Trembling with fear, I strained to open the door, only to discover it was locked from the outside. Desperation engulfed me as I pounded on the door, screaming for help, but my pleas fell on deaf ears. Each passing second in the desolate, silent corner of the house amplified my dread. Several agonizing hours elapsed before my anguished cries reached the ears of a passerby, who summoned help. The door was finally pried open, and I bolted outside as if escaping the clutches of death itself. That Halloween experience transformed into a living nightmare, a stark reminder that real-life horrors often eclipse the realm of movies and books. Life, with its capacity to write its own terrifying tales, ensured that I would never forget the haunting house and the harrowing moments that unfolded that fateful night.